Hello everyone, welcome back to our video class here at CSIC Math Tutor. In this lesson, we're going to spend some time learning about scientific notation, which is the same thing as standard index form, or in some countries, it's simply called standard form. We have three objectives, and they are to define and use the term scientific notation, to write numbers using scientific notation, and to multiply and divide numbers written with scientific notation. Before we get into a definition of what scientific notation is, we want to look at some situations. In life and in mathematics, we can have some really big numbers. Now, here's a big number. This is 299,792,458. And this is the speed of light in terms of meters per second. Sometimes this number is rounded up to 300 million meters per second. Now, if we look at how far light travels in an hour, as in kilometers per hour, then this is the number that we get, which is a really much bigger number. And if we look at how far light travels in a year, then we get a really, really, really big number. We call this a light year. On the other side of numbers, sometimes we have really, really small numbers. So, for example, we have cells in our bodies, and suppose we wanted to find out what was the weight of one of our red blood cells. <clears throat> then the, that number is given as 27 picograms, the weight of a, of a red blood cell. And when we write that out, um, one picogram is 10 to the negative 12. We'll get to that in a moment. When we write out that number, though, we get this number. And that's really, really, really small. This is a fraction. It's really, really, really small. So on one hand, we have very, very big numbers. And on the other hand, we have very, very small numbers. Now, sometimes these numbers can be difficult to work with, especially after multiply and divide and do other operations with them. And even with a calculator, sometimes they become very tedious to write. So how do we fix this? Scientific notation was a technique or a method developed to handle large numbers like that, to write them in such a way so that they are easier to deal with. And so when we talk about scientific notation or standard form, we mean that we want to write a number in this form, a times 10 to the n, where the a is restricted to a number 1 to 9 point something. It can't be 10. It has to be within this range. From 1 to 10, can't be 10, but it can be 1. And n is an integer. Integers, you know, are negative or positive whole numbers. So a times 10 to the n, and the restriction is on your a is that the a has to fall from 1 to 9 point something. Now, 10 to the n, as you realize, are powers of 10, and powers of 10 are these. So we can have 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 4, etc. And 10 to the 4 would mean 10,000, while we have 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the negative 4, etc. And these indicate fractions. The negative power here doesn't mean that it's a negative number. What it means is that it's actually a fraction. So um, how do we write numbers? in standard form and when we see uh, in this part we're going to be looking at numbers that are bigger than one all right so here we have forty-seven thousand, and we want to write this number in standard form or using scientific notation the first thing we want to notice is that we want to find the decimal point and look at this number you realize that the decimal point is not in the number um, that is because when we have a whole number like this the decimal point is at the end of the number that's important to note. We want, though, based on the restriction on our A, we want the number to be um, between 1 and 10. So we want one number before our decimal point. Right now, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers in front of our point, and we want one number in front of that point. So we're going to go ahead and stick the point there between these two. Now we have one number in front of the point, and that number is 4. Then we need to count the space between here. Um, how many digits do we have in between here and between these two points? And so in writing it in standard form, it becomes very simple. We write 4.7 and times 10 to the number of digits that we have in here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and that becomes 10 to the fourth power. In, in writing numbers like these in standard form, 
um, we use a positive index because we're dealing with a number that is bigger than one. All right, look at this one, 324,100. As usual, we're going to stick our point here because we want a number for our A that is um, within this range from one to 10. So we have 3.241, let's put in our equal sign there. 3.241 and our decimal point would be at the back here. So how many spaces in between? One, two, three, four, five. So this would be 3.241 times 10 to the fifth power. Same thing for this. So our decimal point would normally be there and then what we wanted here. And so one, two, three spaces. So we have five times 10 to the third power. And so that's how we write these in standard form. Let's look at this very big number that we had, which was the, the light year. And so because there are so many digits, it makes sense for us to round off a little bit or round it up to the nearest um, right here. So this number is seven, so we could write one here. And so we can stick our point right there between those two and get 9.461. Now our decimal point would be at the end of our number and we want to see how many spaces are in between. So that's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So we'd write that times 10 to the 15th power. And this would be a shorter way to handle this type of number. Now suppose we have a number like this. Suppose we have um, 235.7. And we want to write this number in standard form or in um, scientific notation. So the point is here. But to get this number in standard form, we need to get our point here between the two and the three. So we could write this down as 2.357 times 10 to the number of spaces here. Let's call the spaces. We have one, two, the digits, one, two, two digits. So that's times 10 to the second power. And it doesn't matter exactly where the decimal point is, whether it's at the end or whether it's um, not at the end. Once we're dealing with a number that is bigger than one, this is how we deal with it. Now let's look at numbers that are um, less than one, numbers that are decimal fractions. So when we're dealing with decimal fractions, we use a negative integer for our power to indicate that we are dealing with uh, a, a fraction. Now, Look at this number here. We want, this is our decimal point here, but we want our point to be here so that we only have one number before the point. Um, so that this will become 6.2, which means that it will land between here. So now we would write 6.2, and then we'd have to count the spaces between here and here. So we have one, two, three, four, and that means times 10 to the negative 4. Remember, we use a negative power when we're writing down um, fractions. This is a decimal fraction, so we use a negative power. All right. And if you actually want to write out this number, what it actually means is 6.2 times 1 over 10,000. That's what it actually means. Then you write it out. Um, now, this one. Let's take this one, 0 0.124. Of course, we would want our point to be here. And so we're going to have 1.24 times 10 to the minus 1. So it's pretty simple to write a number in standard form. Um, here we have 0 0.00007. We want our point to be there. And so we write 7 times 10 to the minus um, how many spaces? One, two, three, four, five. And so for the weight of our red blood cell right here, we would stick our point right there. That's where we want it to be. And then we go through and we count. So we have 2.7 times 10 to the how many spaces? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's 10 to the negative 11, and that would be the mass of our red blood cell. All right. Now, how do we multiply numbers that are in standard form? Multiplying numbers in standard form um, 
to do that, we need to use the rules of indices. Now we're going to treat this as, as a base. And when we are multiplying similar bases, you know that we add the powers from indices. And what we're going to do with the 4.2 and the 5 is that we're going to bunch those two together. 4.2 times 5, and then write back our 10. And from indices, when we're multiplying similar bases, we add the powers. So it's going to be 4 plus uh, negative 3. Now... 4.2 times 5 gives us 21. So it's 21 times 10 to, when we add that up, we get 10 to the 1. Now this number now, notice, remember that there's a restriction on the A. The A must be between, it can be 1, but it cannot be 10. And if you notice, this number is bigger than 10. So what we need to do is to rewrite this number in standard form. So we're rewriting this, we end up with, um, 2.1 times 10 um, to the to the 1 times 10 to the 1 so this will now give this will give us now 2.1 times 10 to the 1 plus 1 which is 10 to the 2 um, in practice when we have a situation like this we can simply just adjust this number so this becomes 2.1 and then since it was times 10 to the 1, we just add another 1 to this. And so our answer would be 2.1 times 10 to the 2. Or you could work it out this way as well. So that's how we multiply numbers that are in standard form. Now, how do we divide numbers that are in standard form? Here we have a question. 3.2 times 10 to the 4 divided by 2.1 times 10 to the 3rd. Now... Um, let's write that down using a bracket. So 3.2 times 10 to the fourth power divided by 2.1 times 10 to the third. And as we do the multiplication, we're going to put these two parts together. So we're going to have 3.2 divided by 2.1 times 10 to the 4. Now when we're using indices rules again, when we're dividing indices, we subtract the powers. So that's 4 minus 3. And 3.2 divided by 2.1, we get a really um, long, ugly number. So we're going to round it off. You can punch it in your calculator and look at it. Round it off to 1.52 and times 10 to the 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. So we end up with 10 to the 1. All right, so we have given our answer in standard form. There we go. When the questions pop up on your exam, they are likely to look like this. So um, sometimes you may get something to work out and it says work it out and show it exactly or work it out and leave your answer in standard form. Now look at this one. It says write the value of this. So we have 11.2 square uh, minus 0 0.375 divided um, by 3. So we, let's work out the bracket first. 11, um, let's, let me just change this ink here. 11.2 square minus 0 0.375 divided by 3. Now, 11.2 square is 125.44 minus um, here we have 0 0.125. And that gives us, when we subtract it, 125.44. So this is our answer exactly. This is part one. And then we need to answer part two. We need to write this number in standard form. So part two, we have the number 125.315. Um, here is the point. But to get our A to be between um, one and 10, we need to put our decimal point here. So we count our spaces one, two. So we are going to end up with 1.25315 times 10 to the 2. And that would give us about the exact number. 
we could approximate it and write 1.25 times 10 square, depending on the question. But this is the answer exactly, and this is the answer in standard form. On your multiple choice, it may be similar. So you will get a number and ask to write it in standard form. So we have 0 .0, um, 0 0.0346, and we want our point to be here. So we'd have to move two spaces in this direction, or count two spaces in this direction, which gives us 3.46 times 10. Remember, it's a fraction, so we need to use a, um, a negative power, and that would be to the negative 2. And there we have our answer. Notice that we also have 3.46 to the second power, if you didn't pay attention and you forgot the negative sign. So pay attention to these multiple choice questions. And sometimes it's just like that. Just they give you a number and just say, just write it in, um, in standard form in this case. Let's go again. Um, the point would be here. So it's 8.909 times 10 to the number of spaces, 1, 2 to the negative 2. So it's not a difficult topic to learn how to write numbers in standard form and how to use them. Let's look at uh, another question. Evaluate this expression and leave your answer in standard form. Now notice that this is saying um, 2.43 times 10 to the third. So let's work that out. 2.43 times 10 to the third minus 5.26 times 10 square, and this means that we're going to multiply times 10 to the third, which means 1,000 minus 5.26 times 100. And this gives us 2,430 minus 526. Once you do that subtraction, you end up with 1,904, and that's the answer for that, for um, part 1, part A. And part B now says we are to write this number in standard form. So here we have our number, 1,904, and we want to write in standard form. Our point, we want our point to be here. No, this is a number with, there's no point shown in this number, so we know that the point is at the end. But we want it to be here. To satisfy the restrictions on our A, remember, A has to be between 1 and 10. It can be 1, but it can't be 10, so we have to put our number there. So it becomes 1.904 times now how many spaces between here and here? How many digits? 1, 2, 3. So we count 3 and we write that. This number is bigger than 1, so here we use a positive um, in, integer. Remember that you can find more past than practice papers on our website at csetmathtutor.com or in the, in the past papers pages and sections. Before you go, if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe and share this information with somebody who needs to learn this kind of thing. Thank you for watching and continue to work hard.